breakfast at the Taj Dubai. I hope you can hear me because there's a big fan just behind me, um, which really you need. Um, I took the decision to sit outside this morning for breakfast. Um, and when they, you know, you go, you go up at the beginning and they take your room number and they ask you where you'd like to go, inside or outside. And I said outside um, because, you know, I'm from the UK and, you know, I like to feel a little bit of the warmth. Um, and she did say, are you sure? And then I realised that there's nobody else out here. I'm the only one. Um, and now I know why. Um, it's, it is really quite warm, but they do set it up with fans. Um, so it's a little bit more pleasant. Lovely. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Wonderful. Superb. Thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed. So, um... Oh, no, yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah. No, I was like... Uh, I forgot to ask you. There's no allergies on this. No side. allergies. No, no. So no this allergies. Is the coconut dip. Yep. That's your tomato, this is the lentil. Super. You eat with your hands. Lovely. Oh. Your Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so I've opted for uh, dosa uh, this morning, which is um, Indian speciality. Um, I've got to eat with my hands, apparently. Um, and you have these different kind of dips. I've had this before in India, um, and it's just wonderful. Um, let's give it a try. Oh, superb. So that's, um, so this is what we're having for breakfast. Uh, later on then I'm going to do a little bit of a tour of the hotel for you all. Um, so you can see a little bit more. What I've been really impressed with so far, you know, and, and this is the same in every Taj Hotel, from the moment you check in, um, you do feel really, really welcomed. Um, and you might think that in a, in a lot of hotels, but I just came from another hotel, uh, which actually was about three or four times the price um, of the Taj Dubai. Um, and the, the service in that hotel was good, but if, if you were paying, and I, and I wasn't paying anything in that last hotel, but if you were paying, you would expect it to be absolutely superb. Um, and, it, and it wasn't, it was just, it was just kind of good. Um, here at a Taj, and it's the same with every Taj that I've ever stayed in, um, the service is just above and beyond. Um, an example of that would be, um, you know, when I checked in, you know, they sit you down, they give you a really proper welcome, they talk you through the hotel. Um, and then um, once I got up to my room, there's a little knock on the door afterwards. And um, the, the lady was there and she said, oh, I brought some plasters because I noticed that your finger was bleeding. And she was right, I'd cut my finger. Um, I think it was on my case. Um, but but they, take the, they take the attention to notice these little things and they try and preempt um, any problems that you've got and bring solutions forward. And that's, that's that extra level of service that's just one step above. Um, so, so far I've been really impressed. Um, I'll show you the room later. Uh, wonderful room, as you would expect in any Taj. Um, and yeah, all, all in all, really, really great experience, I've got to say. Highly, highly recommend um, checking this out if you, if you come to Dubai. I'm going to have my breakfast now before it gets cold, um, but I'll do some more videoing later.
hope you enjoyed that short tour of the Taj Dubai Hotel. It's a wonderful hotel. Um, I, I think hopefully you get a little bit of a view from the, you know, from the room. Um, I'm sorry if that was a little bit untidy. <laughs> that was my room, obviously. Uh, that was on the club, on the club floor. Really spacious rooms, very light and airy. Uh, the one I had was overlooking um, downtown Dubai, and you had the Burj Khalifa, which you'll have seen just outside of the window there. Um, bathroom, um, huge big bathtub. Um, you can open up the window. I'm so sorry, you can hear the traffic outside. Um, you can open the open the sort of blinds there, and you can have a bath in the with view of the Burj Khalifa if that's your thing. Um, wouldn't really be my thing. Uh, there's a wonderful rain shower. All the toiletries are molten brown, which is fantastic. I love molten brown. Um, can you hear that traffic? That's insane. Um, they, they just drive with one hand on the wheel and one hand on the horn, I think. Um, so yeah, so the rooms are absolutely fabulous. So the service is really what sets it all apart, though. The, the service is tremendous. And it's the same in all Taj hotels. Um, and look, you know, in case anybody's sort of thinking, you know, I don't, I don't sort of give, give these guys a tip off or anything else that I'm going to be coming in and I'm going to be doing videos or anything. Um, I, I pay my way like anybody else. Um, and I certainly have done this time. But every time you're around anywhere, um, you just randomly like, oh, Mr. Brown, how's your stay? And it's, just, it's just a really nice touch. And they do it for everybody, to be fair. Um, so that's lovely. With regards to um, food and beverage, um, this place absolutely rocks. Uh, where we are right now is the, it's called the Treehouse. A um, little bit quiet now, it's a Thursday evening, so we're just coming to the weekend. It'll get really busy later. Lovely, you sit outside, there's fans round about just to keep you cool. So again, during the low season, in the warm summer months, um, they kind of take that into consideration. Um, wonderful cocktails, it's a great spot. Um, there's another bar just a couple of steps down, I forget the name of it, and that's where the pool area is, you'll have seen that on the video. Um, the pool is a lovely pool, and there's a pool bar there as well, literally a swim-up bar, which is fantastic. Unfortunately, I didn't get to get into the pool um, this time. Next time, I hope I'll get the opportunity, um, especially to, to use that swim-up bar. Um, then you have, you'll have seen, we, um, we went through, there was an area downstairs where there's a bar called The Elephant, which you'll have seen on the video there just before. Um, that's a really nice spot. They have live music there on an evenings. Um, I wanted to do this video from there actually because there's a little bit more life there at the moment but unfortunately again because it's the weekend um, it's just absolutely ram-packed um, which is bizarre because it's so so quiet up here at the um, at the treehouse um, then you'll have seen some of the other F&B establishments there's apparently the finest Indian dining in the whole of Dubai in the Indian restaurant which we saw there and they have like a, a cooking station there and all of the Indian food that you would expect um, absolutely out of this world um, and then you also have um, another sort of um, bar area. Again, I, I should have got all the names of these, but you'll have seen the name hopefully on the video. I'll have, I'll have posted it up on the bottom. Um, but it's, it feels like it's, it's like a sort of a street that you're going through. There's kind of little, little mini bar areas and it's kind of dark with kind of red lighting and lanterns everywhere. Um, just absolutely fabulous. And, and it gets absolutely buzzing later on in the evening. So, you know, when you're talking about nine, 10 o'clock at night, especially this evening, it'll get rammed. Um, I'll try and take some footage later, but people get a little bit um, edgy when you're when you're taking video footage and they're out drinking and having a good time, which is completely understandable, of course. Um, but it's quarter to seven here. Um, I'm flying out tomorrow uh, to Tenerife, where we're going to do our live sessions from uh, Tenerife, which is going to be fabulous. Really looking forward to that. I hope that um, all of you can join us. The first one is planned for Monday the 24th. Um, and then we're hoping to come to you at six o'clock every evening next week um, from a different property each time in Tenerife. They're all fabulous properties as well. And we'll do a full sort of tour around and show you what's what. And then we'll do a Q&A. You know, a lot of you might have questions um, about what's it like in Tenerife, what's it like in Dubai for that matter, um, considering it's on the red list. Um, you know, many of you might have questions as to what's the experience like here? And um, what are the protocols that are in place here for your safety? And I can tell you, there's a lot of protocols. They take it very seriously. If you're out and about and you're not wearing a face mask, um, then there are heavy fines which they give you. And generally, everybody adheres to it. Um, but what surprised me overall about Dubai actually is just how normal it is. Apart from wearing your face masks and, and obviously cleaning your hands constantly, um, it's really very normal.
and there's a lot of people who are here on vacation from other parts of the world and they're having a wonderful time. The biggest challenge that we've got in the UK with it being on the red list is it's hard to get insurance when it's on the red list um, and it's it's also it's a risk you know I've, I've had the vaccine you know I should be okay I've had COVID I should be okay but if I was to catch COVID then I'm gonna have to pay two thousand pounds to to get managed um, a managed quarantine program here in Dubai and obviously that's time away from work and everything else so it is a risk um, and that's the the big sort of challenge I think what overall my feeling is that you know, COVID's going to be with us for years, yes, because until the whole world is vaccinated, it's going, to, it's going to exist and it's going to get through to different destinations. I think the sooner we start to live with it and with the different protocols and getting used to the face mask wearing, um, then I think, you know, it's, it's for the better, really. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to keep it out of the UK forever. I think it's always going to be circulating in certain pockets. Um, and I think we need to sort of try and get used to that as, as best we can and obviously protect ourselves as much as we can. Um, but that's it for now from uh, from Dubai. Hopefully, you can see the Burj Khalifa in the in the background there, just about. Um, really wonderful, uh, wonderful couple of days. It is hot, and it is hot in the low season, which is kind of June, July, August, September. Um, but still, it wouldn't it wouldn't detract you from having a wonderful experience. They're geared up to it. You know, they have not air conditioning units outside, but they have fans outside. Um, the air conditioning inside is superb. All of the pools are climate controlled. Um, so, you know, they, they are geared up to it and, you know, overall, as we know, it's a less crowded time to visit Dubai um, during the low seasons as it is with, with anywhere else and that's why I, for one, absolutely love it. Uh, but that's it for me. Uh, wish you all, all the very best. Hope you can join us in Tenerife next week and uh, look forward to taking all of your questions then. But for now, cheers.